Hello, welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're going to be looking at a viewer question all about, once again, ferrite beads, and specifically about circuit parameters for ferrite bead models. Now, if you're familiar with simulations involving ferrite beads, of course, manufacturers do their best to provide spice simulation models that you can use in a simulator, but if you don't have a simulation model for a given ferrite bead, there is a simple circuit model that you can use to determine the circuit parameters and then you can use that in your simulation. I'm gonna show you that circuit model, show you the process for determining those parameters, and we'll go ahead and get started right now. So before we get started showing the process for determining circuit parameters for a ferrite bead model, let's take a look at that viewer question. Hi, Dr. Peterson. How did you calculate R, L, and C in the ferrite model? For example, to calculate C, did you use the reactance equation for capacitance? Thank you. Great question, and no, I did not use the reactance equation for capacitance to determine the capacitance in the ferrite bead model. What you can actually do is use a very simple circuit model that is based on a parallel RLC circuit. There's a very simple procedure you can use just by looking at the ferrite bead impedance curve, and you can use that to determine what are the circuit parameters for your particular ferrite bead. So let's take a look at the very simple model that can be used to describe ferrite bead behavior in circuits. Now, of course, if you have a spice model, you can use a spice model from a manufacturer, but of course not all components have spice models. And so instead, if that is not available, you can use this very simple model. So here we have a voltage source, we have a series resistance, and then this branches off to a parallel RLC circuit. So here we have our R, here we have our very poorly drawn inductor, and then here we have our capacitance. These three parameters together, we have an R, an L, a C, and then we'll call this R sub S. These collectively determine the behavior of our ferrite bead in the circuit. Now, what we'll do in this video is I'll show you very quickly the process for determining the R, L, and C values from an impedance curve. And then we'll also look at what the R, S value is. And then we're gonna actually compare the prediction from this model with an actual ferrite bead. And then we'll be able to see how accurate this model really is. Here, when we take this model and we apply it to a ferrite bead, we need to look at a couple of different things. First thing that we need to look at with regards to an actual ferrite bead is the impedance curve of that ferrite bead. So all ferrite beads will have an impedance curve in the data sheet, and it's basically a magnitude of impedance versus frequency curve. And the curves basically look something like this. This is a pretty rough guess or pretty rough drawing, but you get the idea. You have a maximum impedance somewhere at some particular frequency. We can call this maximum Z. And then here we have a frequency which is our resonant frequency. Now here at the low end of this frequency range, we have this curve dropping down close to zero, but it never hits exactly zero. So there's gonna be some very small greater than zero resistance right here that corresponds to the DC current flowing through this ferrite bead. Some ferrite bead data sheets will also show you a portion of this curve, which is, for example, a reactance curve, and it generally looks something like this, and then it drops down to zero at the resonant frequency. Now, theoretically, if you know something about RLC circuits, you know that the reactance curve will actually go negative above the resonant frequency. And so if we were to draw it in, it would basically be you know, something down here like this. But that's generally omitted from ferrite bead data sheets. Typically, the frequency range that we really care about is everything from DC up to resonance. Generally, we're trying to pass a signal below the peak of this curve, and then we wanna filter out any high frequency noise above that bandwidth that we want to pass. Just from looking at this curve, how do we determine all of the different circuit parameters here? First, we know that right at resonance, the frequency at resonance is going to just be one over two pi square root of LC. That's the first thing we know for sure. And this is again, just from your basic college electronics course, you can look up that equation in any textbook and it's gonna be valid here. Next, what is the maximum impedance at the resonant frequency? Well, again, you can just go back to the impedance equation from any electronics textbook. It's just given by 
this equation here, and again, this is a magnitude. This is taking the difference between the capacitive and the inductive portions of the impedance. We have a squared, square root. And if you plug in this value for the resonant frequency in here for the angular frequency, you then get that Z max is just equal to R. So we've already determined one of the parameters straight away. What is RS? Well, RS is usually a very small value, and some ferrite beads will specify a DC resistance right there in the data sheet. So you can usually pull it out from the electrical specifications table in that data sheet. You could also look at the curve in logarithmic scale, and you may be able to get the value from there as well. So whatever this impedance value is right here at F equals zero, that's gonna give us our RS value. So we've already determined two of the parameters, and then the third one we have an equation for that relates our L and C. Now, because we have the resonant frequency, but we have two unknowns here, we need one more equation that we can use to determine one of these parameters, either L or C. Once we determine, for example, L, then we can use the other equation to determine C or vice versa. If you're again familiar with RLC circuits, you know that there is one other equation we can use, and that is the bandwidth. Now, how is the bandwidth defined for an RLC circuit? Well, the bandwidth can be determined by looking at the full width half maximum of the power dissipation curve at resonance. If you take a look at what is the total power dissipated at resonance, that power at resonance is going to be equal to I squared times whatever the maximum impedance is, which is just R. Now, the full width half maximum of that power dissipation curve is going to be 0.5 times whatever the maximum power is. So that's I squared R right here. And you can, of course, rewrite this as one over square root of two times the current, all of that squared, multiply that by R. So if you have a power curve for this circuit, then you can use that to calculate what is the full width half max. And that full width in the frequency range at half the maximum power is equal to one over two pi times RC. So here we know R, we can calculate C just by looking at a curve, and then using C, we can then get L. So this means that our design equations are C is equal to one over two pi times R times F W H M, and I'll put it in parentheses here. And then once we have C, we can then plug it in here and solve for L. So that means L is equal to one over four pi squared F resonance squared times C. And there we go. So all you have to do is determine C, plug it in here and determine L, and then you know all of the circuit parameters. Now there's a little bit of an issue here because of course, if you look in a data sheet, you're given the impedance curve. You're never given the power curve to actually determine the full width half maximum. That's a little bit of an issue because now you're gonna to have to iterate through different values of this full width half maximum frequency range in order to then determine what does that impedance curve look like for your ferrite that you're trying to describe. So that may sound a little awkward, but what we can do is we can actually take a look at a calculator that I've created in Microsoft Excel you guys know that I'm a huge fan of Microsoft Excel calculators. We're gonna look at that calculator and we're gonna try some different values for these circuit parameters and then we're gonna compare that with an actual ferrite bead using the impedance curve from the data sheet. Let's go ahead and take a look. So here is the calculator application that I've created and I'll describe what's going on here in just a moment. But what we're doing here is we're comparing a prediction from this circuit model with the impedance curve of an actual ferrite bead. So the ferrite bead that we're gonna use in this example is the MH2029-401Y from Borns. And the reason I used this particular ferrite bead is because I've used it in the past, but also I actually have the entire impedance curve visible in this graph. Now, if you scroll through this data sheet, you'll see that there's a lot of different options. Clearly, you can go through here and take a look at whatever beads you might wanna use in a project and, and try and model them with the circuit model. But we're gonna stick with this MH2029-401Y component. So here, let's take a look at the calculator. So what I'm doing here in this calculator is I'm plugging in some of the circuit values right up here in the very top. 
So I start with the full width half maximum guess, and then I start with a resonant frequency. Now the resonant frequency, I can pretty clearly pick off just by looking at the graph. I can also very clearly pick off the resistance value of 450 ohms right here also by looking at the graph. So I've gone ahead and just plugged those two in. Now the full width half max value, I determined that as an initial guess, just by looking at the full width half maximum value of the impedance curve, because I expect that full width half maximum value to be similar to the power curve. But again, we don't have the power curve for this component, so we have to make an initial guess. So that's a pretty decent initial guess. So when I plug those two values in here, you see that I get 0.842 picofarads for the capacitance, and then 1.18 microhenries for the inductance. Now here on this graph, I've overlaid the predicted value with the image from the data sheet. And you can see that they line up pretty well in the low frequency range. You can see here that the Z magnitude curve pretty much overlaps with the Z magnitude curve from the data sheet all the way up to the resonant frequency. For the reactants, we can see it does a pretty good job. There's a little bit of overestimation here in the mid range, but then it also falls off at the same rate. So that's also pretty good. What we don't see working too well here is in the high frequency range. Up here in the high frequency range, we see a pretty big deviation between the magnitude of the impedance curve and then the resistance curve. Now, one thing we might try to do is try a different value for the full width half max. And you can see here that if I attempt to use a different value for the full width half max, something a little lower, you can see that I'm able to get one side of the magnitude of the impedance curve to line up very nicely, but now the other side doesn't. So unfortunately, you can't ever get it perfect. And I think this is because the circuit model overestimates a bit the reactance that is happening in this ferrite bead. So because it's overestimating the reactance a bit, of course, it's not going to perfectly line up with this measured data that you see from the data sheet. But I think the frequency range that really matters is the low frequency range. If you go back to my explanation at the beginning of the video, I explained why that's really important. Generally, what we're trying to do is pass a set of frequencies in this low frequency range, and then we want to block noise at anything higher than those frequencies. So that's why we really care a lot more about modeling this in this low frequency range rather than in this high frequency range. And in this high frequency range, we can deem this deviation to usually be acceptable for most applications. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Always love getting your questions and comments. And if you want to download this ferrite bead calculator, just check out the link in the description and you can download it for free. Keep leaving your comments and questions in the comment section. Make sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. We'll see you next time.